How's everyone doing today? Great. Good. 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 All right. Cool. So today we're going to teach you guys how to refine your nonverbal delivery. Uh, my name is Asfar. And I'm Sean. So here's a quick little introduction video of uh, kind of what nonverbal delivery is. It's pretty funny. So let y'all take a look. Good morning, sir. What can I get started for you today? So that's what he was doing. You know, so you saw how hard it was to uh, order a cup of coffee. So hopefully after today's presentation, I can show you all how to order a cup of coffee without doing all that. <laughs> so first we're going to talk about analyzing your nonverbal style. So the first thing is distracting positions. Usually it's when a presenter is speaking. It's the first thing you see. So you can probably see my legs are really spread apart. I look really weird, don't I? So this right here is a distracting position. So when you're talking to your audience, you want to not be distracting. You want them to pay attention to your presentation versus how you're standing. You don't want to look silly in front of everyone, right? So uh, effective formal positions, that's when the speaker is standing above the audience. The uh, Being above the audience creates sort of a formal presence. Uh, lets the audience kind of pay attention better. It's, it's just a better environment. When you're speaking <coughs> down to your audience, they tend to pay attention a little bit better. Uh, the next one is effective informal positions when it's a little bit more casual. Uh, if you say I'm talking to Preston, I come up, lean against the table, like, hey, what are you doing, man? You know, it's, it's very casual. It doesn't, it's not very formal, so it's how you talk to people on a normal basis. Um, then environmental factors uh, include the, the room size, how big the room is. Uh, if the room's small, you don't want to walk too far. If the room's big, you want to walk evenly. You want to space out your movements. Um, when, if the room is big and you have enough space, before you move on to the next, your next section of your, you know, your presentation, you want to kind of move to the next part of the room and say, okay, now we're going to start here. So it gives the audience a little, uh, you know, lets them know that you're about to start something new so they can, you know, re, re, you know pay attention and readjust and get ready to listen to you. Uh, personal style is the style the speaker has when they talk their hand movements, how they walk, the way they look at you, their facial expressions. It's personal style. You don't want to sit here, be still, act like a robot. You want to, you want to be lively. You want to be enthusiastic. You want, to, you want your audience to enjoy when you're talking. You want them to know that you're not boring, you're not a robot. So, so that's your personal style. You want to put some style into your presentation. So next we're going to talk about hand and arm gestures. Uh, if you guys probably noticed, I've been moving my hands around a little bit. Not too much, not too less, just, just the right amount. Uh, you want to discover your natural gesture style. To do that, you can get with a friend. Tell them, hey, I'm going to talk to you. Can you watch what I do with my hands? Can you watch what I do with, uh, you know, with my legs, face, whatever? Because you, know, you can be nervous. When you're nervous and you're doing something, usually you don't notice the things you're doing. It's subconscious. It's happening on its own. You could be standing. You could be fiddling your fingers. You could be shaking your keys in your pocket. You don't know because you're so nervous. So you go to your friend, let him know, and he will show you and let you know what you're doing wrong or some things that are distracting that can improve your presentation and help you get your point across to your audience in a better way. And then you want to avoid distracting gestures. So when you're talking, you know, like the keys, uh, keys messing with stuff in your pocket, whatever it is, you don't want to distract your audience. 
Uh, you want to use conversational patterns, so when you're talking about something or describing two things, you want to use your hands to describe two things. It helps put stuff together. So it's not, this is pretty good. And then you always want to adapt to the situation. So if you're moving too much and your audience is looking at your hands while you're moving, they're paying attention to your hands versus what you're saying, you want to adapt and move less. Uh, the eye contact and facial expressions, you always want to make eye contact with your audience. You don't want to look down at their feet. You don't want to look you know, somewhere else over here and talk. You want to look at their eyes. If you're not comfortable with that, you can look at their forehead, uh, anything. Or find an easy face to look at that looks comfortable to you and you can be comfortable when you present. Uh, vocal traits, volume. It's how loud you talk. If it's a big room, you want to talk loudly. You want your voice to be broadcasted. You want to be, be able to be heard. Uh, rate is how fast you talk, if you mix your words together. You want to talk at a slow pace, because when you go up there and you're nervous, people tend to talk faster. So you want to slow yourself down and try to keep a good rate. Uh, and, uh, inflection is when inflection is when you... Uh, let's talk about enunciation. So enunciation is how you enunciate your words. That's when you, you pr uh, pronounce the words correctly. You want to say the words right. You don't want to pronounce a word wrong and look, you know, bad in front of your audience, they're not gonna know, they're not gonna find you credible. So filler words and sounds, that's um, filler words is okay, so that was filler words. When you don't forget <laughs> what you're saying, you say um, you say all that stuff, you, you forget what you're saying. So you wanna pause, take a deep breath, focus on what you're saying and continue. Uh, space and objects around you is you know this table, I don't want to keep walking into the table. Uh, objects can be anything, even your person, so my tie I don't want my tie flipping around everywhere. I don't want to keep messing with it, cause a distraction. So you always want to be aware of your objects and try not to move them around too much. So now we're going to move on to uh, practicing your delivery. And I'll hand it off to Preston. All right. So first, you want to get comfortable. Uh, you can put together your outline, your notes. Um, don't write out complete sentences. You want to use short phrases. Um, and then when you're doing your notes, utilize white space. Uh, keep your notes like not cluttered. Uh, you want to own your content. You want to go through uh, your presentation multiple times so that uh, you're comfortable with it. Um, and you want to be able to explain each point multiple ways. Uh, once you've done that, you've effectively made content yours and you see more content. Uh, you want to connect your notes. Uh, you can do that with no page or presenter view. Uh, no pages allows you to uh, link your information to the bottom of your slides. And presenter view allows you to see that content while <coughs> the uh, presentation, the audience sees just the presentation view. Uh, you want to rehearse. You want to run through your presentation until you're comfortable. Uh, work on timing. You don't want to go over your lot of time. Uh, this makes your audience know it and reduces credibility. Uh, you want to rehearse out loud in the manner that you'll be presenting. So if you're going to be standing while you present, you want to uh, rehearse standing. Uh, you want to work, work on transitions to make it seem more normal and fluid. Um, and you want to work on polishing your number of skills. Uh, when you rehearse, when you rehearse with the aids, uh, when you communicate your message, don't let your slides communicate your message. Uh, take your time. The uh, slides are going to be uh, new to the audience so you don't want to like, push past them. You want to eliminate visual distractions. Uh, move on with the slides whenever you're done. You don't only hold slides up. Uh, main, I, maintain eye contact with the audience. Uh, don't let your slides distract you. Uh, consider adding extra slides at the end of your presentation so if you go over, you don't have to go in and restart the presentation. Um, and you really want to become familiar with your equipment in your room. Uh, make sure when you present, you go through it before so that you know that your, your presentation is going to go off that pitch. Uh, when you're doing deck presentations, uh, you really want to practice your openings. You can explain your purpose and what you're going to go over. Uh, give special attention to complex ideas and images. You want to preview uh, the table of contents beforehand or summarize what you're going to be doing going over. Uh, you want to consider your nonverbal messages as in like where to stand, uh, natural posture, uh, knowing your content makes you more confident. You want to gesture only, exactly. Uh, you're doing online presentations. It's, it's harder. Uh, if you're not using a webcam, your audience is not going to see you. Um, you might consider um, putting a picture on your welcome screen so 
so that your audience can visualize it. Um, when we become familiar with the equipment, maybe send the uh, slides and arguments beforehand. And uh, if you are using webcam, you'll remember to smile and to uh, look at the screen, uh, not, look at the camera, not the screen. All right, so I'm going to be talking about uh, managing your nervous symptoms. I'm going to start off with symptoms and then give you some techniques to help with those symptoms. So first off, we're going to have the visible symptoms. And I highlighted three because these are the big three that I've been noticing with our presentation. <laughs> and I put rubbing fingers at the top because that is my biggest issue. I really stand up here and rub my fingers. And it, it's so distracting. Whenever you move your hands a lot, the audience really keys in on it. Pacing or rocking. It's okay sometimes to survey the room, talk to one side, talk to the other, but excessive pacing and walking when you're nervous, it just becomes too distracting. The, uh, the audience just keys in again on that and your, your point doesn't get spread across. Staring at notes. Now in the book it said that's, that's good to use if you're really nervous, you really just don't like public speaking, you can stare at your notes, that's fine, but try to rehearse it enough to where you can just pick it up, you can key in on just one category, I can look at staring at notes, I know what I'm going to say, with that I'm going to read off a physical paper in front of me. Next are the audible symptoms. We kind of discussed this earlier, filler words, um, yeah, speaking too fast, gasping for breath. The, the bottom symptoms are more, more for the people that have really bad anxiety. You, not often do you see someone up here go, and they get really nervous. That doesn't happen often, but it does happen and it is unfortunate. And the way you get over that is you practice and you you do it over and over again until you get good at it. The undetectable symptoms, I'm sure we've all felt some. Our first presentation, maybe when you walked in here and saw the syllabus, you saw we had a presentation, your heart's already starting to pound. You're nervous. You don't, you don't want to stand in front of all these people. It makes you uncomfortable. All these are pretty common. Everyone experiences them. Brief memory loss. When I read that, it clicked immediately. You're standing up here. You know what you're going to say. You get up here and you forget it all. That's normal. We've all experienced that. It's just a part of being nervous. Everyone has to overcome it. There's nothing to worry about. Here's some general techniques. Identify what makes you nervous. You've, you've seen all these symptoms before. And key in, if I rub my hands a lot, maybe I should take note of that and try to fix that problem. So know what makes you nervous. Practice makes perfect. Practice, practice, practice. It really helps you out. And lastly, get feedback from your friends, your mom, dad, boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe both, I don't know, whatever you're into. <laughs> Some physical techniques, exercise in the morning. It, uh, <laughs> it helps out with adrenaline, um, calms you, you know, you have, you have everything out already. Uh, the specific body parts, these are body parts that hold a lot of stress in your body. Um, when you're getting massages, you're getting they're working on your back, your shoulders. Every time they get to the shoulders, oh, you're so tense, you have so many knots, because you hold so much stress with there. You gotta learn how to relax that and help you present better. Mental techniques, the big one I wanna talk about is just think rationally, the ABCD system. A, the activating event, so these nervous symptoms I was talking about earlier, I'm rubbing my hands. Um, it sparks an irrational belief system. You're, you do that, you stand up here and you think, God, this is a disaster, I'm doing terrible. That, that causes consequences. You know, you, you are anxious the next time you do have to do a presentation. Um, maybe you do get a little depressed knowing that you have to stand up in front of all these people. But all this is transcended by disputing the irrational belief system with rational thoughts. Other speakers aren't perfect, and you don't expect them to be perfect, so why should you have to be perfect? No one knows you make a mistake until you, the only person that really knows is yourself, right? Maybe your partners know, but they're not gonna rat you out because they don't want you to rat them out. So don't expect to be perfect because you're not going to be. And if you do make a mistake, just move on. It's not going to be a big issue. Some last minute tips to help you out. Improve your mental state. Be positive. What you think about, you bring about. My mom always told me that. So think positively. It'll really help you out in the future. Manage your physical symptoms. Take some deep breaths. Maybe drink a glass of water. That'll, that'll help you out. Some Just calm your nerves. And the last thing, relax. Relax, relax, relax. It'll help you out in the end. In, in the end. Um, just a quick recap. We talked about analyzing your nonverbal style, practicing your delivery, and then managing your nervous system at the end. Do you have any questions? All right, thank you all so much. <laughs>